Hi everyone, today we're going to be colouring a few of these bits and pieces in this treasure chest. Now this is from the uh, Miniature Enchanted Forest book and I'm just going to zoom out a tiny bit because it seems a bit blurred. There we go. Now I've had a request for how to do berries, blackberries and yes berries and blackberries, blueberries and blackberries and things like that. So I thought I would have a go here. These are quite small but I think we can have some fun with them. And um, I'm going to be using my Stedler Ergosoft pencils, which are quite small as well, but um, to fit in these little details. I think if I picked, if I'd gone for the big book, they'd have been a bit bigger. But it doesn't matter. I'm just going to uh, show you how to do it anyway, and we'll have some fun because I love colouring berries. So I'm going to start with number six with my Ergosoft. Now this is the dark purple which always always in my camera looks very blue and we're going to do these two little berries here. Um, I will try and zoom in just a tad more. No, nope. there we go. That's as far as it will go. So I'm going to start near the bottom with a heavy layer of colour because we will be in shadow down here where it's near to the other items and then gently fade it towards the top so I hope you can see that it's darker at the bottom and we'll do the same again here so I'm putting down more layers of colour at the bottom and reducing it as we come up towards that top edge of the berry. Now to emphasise that colour I'm going to grab my dark grey which is number eight. You could use a black. I prefer the less harsh grey and I'm just going to go over where it. I feel it should be darker with a layer of grey just to darken up those very bottom areas where there would be more shadow. Now this colour for me is a little bit too Mm, purpley I suppose and I'm just going to lighten it up just with a tad of number 61 this pink and I'm just going to do a gentle layer all over the whole thing it really is quite subtle you may not pick it up in the camera but it just brightens them slightly and then I'm going to go back to my dark purple number six again and finish off with going back over where I did the grey and lightening it around just finishing off blending it all together just a little layer across now what you can do with berries as well is to add a little bit of white pen to give them some shine I'm just going to try and find the right size pen. Here we go. This is my Sakura Jelly Roll. I'm using my 5 which is a very fine nib because this is a small berry and I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny streak of white in two places. Well one place on each to look like shine. Now for me that's a little bit dark. I'm just going to pack it down a bit and it's still a bit bright so I'm going to grab my purple I'm just going to very gently colour over it while it's still wet I'm actually trying to make it just a little bit smaller and fainter that's better I'm happier with that you can fiddle around with that a bit you can chip it off once it's dry with a pencil if you're careful or whatever now I'm going to have a go at this blackberry next. Now blackberries quite dark again, um, probably darker than the blueberry but I'm going to start with the base of this colour and I'm just going to go over all the um, circles with just a little bit of this purple to start with. As I said before this is number six. Now Johanna's already drawn us in these dark areas between each one which is handy. On some of the blackberries she draws she doesn't fill these in dark and you could do that yourself with a black pencil but we don't need to. Now I'm going to deal with each one of these circular bits separately which is quite difficult in such a small picture but is worthwhile and what I'm going to do 
is outline each with a darker layer of this purple to leave a lighter area in the center. Now what that does, if you can see the difference between one that's done and one that doesn't, hasn't been done, is I feel it makes them look less flat, makes them look more rounded, because if you think about with the blackberry, each of these little circular pieces is actually a sphere, so we want to make them look rounded. So that's good and it also makes them look shiny. Oh, we've got a little bit in there which I'm just going to put in. So I'm just doing a circular movement, pushing harder on the outside, doing more layers and less towards the centre. I do have a Blackberry tutorial. Um, I will link to it um, in, the, in my description which is more detailed than this one will be so you can have a look at that but it was old I don't think I spoke I think it was one of the first ones I did I was a bit shy I always find it oh, I, you know I used to think oh gosh speaking a bit scary but uh, I've got used to it now so that's the basic part I want to darken that up in, in a similar way to how I did with the black, the blueberries. I'm going to go in with my dark grey. In fact, no, I'm going to use a black for these because they can be very black. So I'm going to use a black. So this is number nine. And I'm going to go back in doing the same as I did with the purple with the black. Now I'm hoping for maybe the outside might be really black but I'm hoping we'll still see the black printing in between each bit here and here looks darker and that we still get a bit of the purple colour showing through so it's a matter of building up gentle layers so that you can make sure you get the colour you want if you go in too heavy handed you might just end up with it being completely black which is not what we're going for now with the blackberries you can choose to put a little tiny dot of white on each one to make it look more shiny or not. I'm not going to and I'll tell you why because this is small even though I've got a fairly small gel pen nib I don't think it's small enough it will just be too big for these these blackberries so I think it will look it'll, it'll dominate basically so that's that. So I think that's okay. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I think I might do one of these um, these conquer cases as well, just to show you, as we're uh, we haven't taken very long to do those two things. Now, what I usually do with these is I usually start with this green, number 57, and give it just a basic colour of green. Now, these um, I call them conquer cases. They're chestnut or horse chestnut cases. If you're not from the UK you may not have seen this sort of tree. Inside there's a beautiful um, sort of nut. Um, some are edible and some aren't depending on if they're chestnuts or horse chestnuts. Um, chestnuts are delicious and horse and um, the non-edible ones we used to play games with. Now they're sort of green and brown so what I usually do is I have a look at these spikes and I grab, I want this sort of brown, number 73, so sort of reddish brown and I want to emphasise some of these spikes in brown and I'm doing quite a hard um, amount of brown here and I'm going to do these bits too because they're spikes as well just on the tips and these sorts of lines as well. There we go. Now I want to shade that a little bit more now. Um, um, I'm trying to think what would I use. I think I'll grab this one. This is the number 52 and I'm going to use this around the bottom here where there'd be some shadow to darken it. It's the wrong shade I realise that. We're going to go back over it in a minute. So in all these gaps and edges where we're near to other things, 
there will be some shadow falling on the chestnut so but also because it's spherical I'm going to put a little bit around the edge and hopefully if it looks like the light's shining there it might make it look more rounded so I'm going to go back to my number 57 and just go back over the top of everything really but what I'm thinking about here is the pressure I want a nice hard layer around the edge so you see I'm going over back and forth building up the colour around the edge and then here I want it lighter so I'm just going to do some gentle circles to build up light layers until I get what I'm looking for. So I'm actually going to swap to a slightly lighter green the number 56 and just go around here in this bit just so I can darken up the pencil without um, making it look less shiny and rounded. So I'm just going around and that last little bit I'm actually going to go over in a yellow I'm going to grab number 10 and hopefully not only will that blend the colours but it will add a warmth and shine just to that top area there we go so we've done that one and I'm thinking let's do an acorn again I've got an acorn tutorial which I will link to and it's much more detailed than this will be again and um, this is number 49 I'll just start colouring while I'm chattering um, it's much more detailed and I actually follow a tutorial from a book and uh, link to that book so this one is my own making up rather than following someone else's book tutorial but uh, it was a Helen Elliston book um, I'm going to make it darker at the bottom here um, and uh, yes she um, she was happy for me to do the tutorial using her book and uh, help her to promote her lovely book so my idea here is I'm thinking it's going to be lighter higher up and darker down here where there's more shadow here where it's near to the case and the light is sort of coming from above as it has been with these items so I'm going to keep layering up here and then doing less up here but I have got a darker I'm going to skip to using the slightly darker one which is the number 73 just to build up a bit more colour down here it's quite nice and warm this colour and I am going to take that all the way to the top but I just want a really light layer but I just like that warmth that we get from that now I'm going to create a little bit of shadow with number 76 just right along here so I'm just pushing a dark layer along there and then I'm also thinking we might need a little bit here next to where this sort of stick part is and last of all for this I'm going to use this lovely yellowy colour number 16 and just go all over it to blend all the colours together and to add some warmth and I'm pressing really hard and then I will have a look and see whether it needs a bit more and I think I'm going to go in with that darkest brown to just overemphasize that and then blend that up with the number 73 it's just a matter of fiddling with it adding layers until you're happy and luckily this paper is very forgiving you can add layers galore and it's happy there we go now I'm happy with that 
and we've got to do this little cup piece. Now again this is patterned, sometimes I um, do something with the patterning, this is number 76, but on this particular one it's small and oh, and she goes miles out of the line. I'm just going to grab my rubber, let's, let's try that again. So because it's small I'm just going to leave the pattern to just show through, I'm not going to worry about it. Get a bit closer so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've just done a general layer and now I'm beginning to think about um, light and shade and shadow. It's going to be darker here at the bottom where it's next to this other acorn. So putting in some extra layers here, just fading that up towards the top. And we also want some extra down here. There will be shadow down here too. Now I'm going to grab a darker one. I've got the number 77. If you don't have a darker brown, if you've only got the 24 Erg Soft User Black, but just go gently. So I'm just going to overemphasize some of these shadowy areas with this darker one. And then I want to blend this all together and I'm going to use this, this brown, number 73. It's a bit warmer and lighter, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap here because I think that's going to give us a little bit of shine. So I'm going to blend that in with the lighter, number 16, just so that I'm very gently just so that it's neat but it still shines for us so it gives a more impression that this is rounded and we could do the same with this acorn making it dark on each side so that it um, would look more shiny I see I've coloured in that stick by mistake but uh, we shall leave it I've also noticed that this bit here hasn't been coloured in of the um, blackberry so I'm just going to go over that with my purple. There we go. And we haven't done this leafy bit either, which I'm going to do now. And that will probably be... Oh, we've got a feather to do as well. So number 52 is the green we used for the... Um, here. So just start with an even layer. And what I like to do is I just grab actually I don't want one. number 38 and I'm just going to do a little bit of darker colour near to the blackberry where there will be shadow and on the ends a little bit. I tend to do a little bit on the ends as well just to make it look more shaped somehow. There we are. That's that. It's very simple, that one. Um, the feather. We'll just do this feather here. And then we would have done a bit of each, I think. I'm just checking. Now, the colour of the feather is quite tricky. I think about it in the context of the whole page. We've got the box, the chest, which I would probably do in wood, maybe some gold. Um, so we've got browns and yellows. We've got all these purples and things. Now I have to think about, do I want to bring in a new colour? I need something that's going to stand out from the brown here. So, uh, but do I want something like blue or pink to bring in a brand new colour? Or do I want one of the colours that I've used already? And it's, it depends on whether you like a limited colour palette or not. But what I'm going to do is bring in a pink, but use this number 61, which we used in these so it's not a completely new colour and I'm going to do the whole thing just in the one colour so I'm going to start with a gentle layer of it just so that I can see where I'm at really now the little st stalky bit in the middle we're going to leave blank at the minute and what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of shading so just darker in the centre 
along the edge of that piece in the middle and on the edges. It's quite small, so it's quite fiddly. I'm going to put my head close to it so I can see. And I find that by leaving these little white lines it makes it look like it's shining. But we do need to do that little piece in the middle. And I'm going to choose... I think I'm going to go for the dark grey, number 8, but use it quite gently. Because I want you to be able to see that that is a different colour. But I don't want it really, really dark. So there we are. I'm not sure how well that's being picked up by the camera, um, the pink colour. But that's it. So there we go. That's all those little bits and pieces done. So I hope that's been interesting. I'm looking forward to doing more berries when Johanna's new book comes out because she's got um, those cherries and strawberries and things like that, which are going to be great fun to do. But uh, that's that for now. So hopefully that'll keep you going. I think we're all getting really excited about the new book. So uh, anyway, but that that's me. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and happy colouring.